today. I'm taking the world's longest 747 flight in first class. For the next 15 hours, I'll fly 7,000 miles from Seoul all the way to Atlanta, USA. I'll show you exactly what it's like from the bed, Korean dining, and even what's upstairs. Not to mention the eye-watering ticket price of $8,000. But you're joining me on this adventure, so let's pick up our story at 6 a.m. on the way to the airport. Annyeong hasio and welcome to Korea. It's an early start this morning as Incheon Airport is around an hour from downtown. Let's head inside and go check in then. Most check-in formalities are dealt with at a regular desk, but not Korean Airlines first class. Instead, we'll head further into the terminal to a dedicated premium check-in. After being warmly greeted, I'm shown into a separate room to wait whilst my documents are processed. Interestingly, Korean uses the Grand Hyatt to provide F&B services in this mini lounge. I enjoy an ice cold sparkling water and within moments I'm presented with my boarding pass and directed over to security. I'm surprised there's no separate first-class security screening, though I am offered a chaperone by the airline. I think this time I'll just proceed on my own. Um, what exactly do we have here then? Anyway, as we were, let's head over to the first-class lounge, located in the corner of the terminal, tucked away by some construction. I'm greeted warmly by a member of staff and ushered into the lounge. The lounge is modern, spacious and most importantly quiet. This is far from a Delta Sky Club. There's a small restaurant offering a selection of drinks including champagne and light bites. Though we'll settle into a private cubicle and take a browse of the a la carte menu which can be ordered directly to my seat. I want to prioritise eating on board today so just opt for an iced coffee which is lovely by the way. It's at this point I'm presented with a gift, a personalised laser engraved luggage tag. This is such a lovely touch and a gift I'll certainly use. With that I make it time to go get on board. The gate is all but a short walk away and within moments we're at gate 231 and I spy our aircraft, a beautiful Boeing 747. Certainly one of the most iconic airframes in the world and reminiscent of the golden era of aviation. Back to present day, this variant is actually the longest commercial aircraft in the world at 250 feet. Crazy when you compare this to a standard 737. I'm welcome to board at my leisure and you don't need to ask me twice. I'm super excited having not actually flown Korean before, coupled with going on the world's longest 747 flight. Let's get right down that jet bridge then as the anticipation builds. And just before we get on board this luxurious flight, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Sterling Pacific. Sterling Pacific is a spec-driven brand that manufactures aluminium luggage for pilots and frequent flyers. These travel cases are made of 5052 aluminium and reinforced with A380 aluminium corners with impact bearing ridges on the front and back and beautiful Italian leather handles. Two oversized wheels are chosen for maximum control instead of four which may have difficulty on rough terrain. In fact, the sheer number of compliments I've already received from fellow travellers, this luggage has certainly been a professional statement and a conversation starter for all the right reasons. Sterling Pacific cut no corners, making it the most sturdy option available on the market. It feels secure like a bank vault and oozes old school style and refinement. While Sterling Pacific's luggage may not be the most affordable option out there, it offers something unique for those who aren't willing to compromise on their luggage. To make it more accessible, they provide provided you all with a special offer, a $300 discount by using code TREKTRENDY when making a purchase at sterlingpacific.com slash TREKTRENDY. Stepping on board feels like an entirely different world. The first class cabin is nestled right in the nose of the 747 with just six private suites and I'm in one alpha right at the front. With no overhead bins, I'm able to stow my carry-on in the cupboard shared with one Juliet. Let's settle into my suite then. 
and promptly offered a glass of Henri Giroux champagne, which is decent stuff retailing at $250 a bottle. Described by sommeliers as an edgy, lively champagne with bread dough, dried apples and apricots. And by me, yeah, it tastes good. The jet bridge begins to retract as we prepare for pushback. It's time to get my seatbelt securely fastened as one of my new favourite safety videos begins to screen. Well, that was quite something. As we begin our taxi, the ground staff bow to the plane. This is only something I've ever seen before in Japan. It's not long before we hurtle down the runway and up into the mid-morning Korean sunshine. So what's our route then? We'll be flying over the next 15 hours, some 7,500 miles to Atlanta, USA. It's not long before we top out with our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Let's get that seatbelt off then and take a look at the extensive menus on board. There are two menus to choose from, the first being the Korean one, which looks fabulous. The second one being international focused, which of course includes caviar service. Orders placed make it time to take a proper look around our stunning Boeing 7478 aircraft. Today on board there are over 360 passengers across three classes of service. Let's focus initially on the upstairs of the aircraft. Up here there are just 22 business class seats in a 2-2 configuration. These are called Apex Suites and despite not looking it, all feature directile access thanks to the staggered layout. The best business seats in the house are right up front here with just the flight deck for company. Now to head back downstairs to the main deck where there are 314 economy class seats and just in front there's room for a further 28 business class passengers. Finally we get back to our new home for the next 15 hours, the first class section with space for just 6 passengers. So I'm in the aforementioned 1 Alpha, which is so far forward you're actually sitting in front of the pilots above. It's a super spacious suite which is also most private complete with a closing door. I think it's time to crack on with meal service and presented with a warm towel as I'm informed my appetizer is nearly ready. My tray table pops out of the console to my left, offering up plenty of room for my Korean dining experience. I'm served in a mousse-bouche of roasted cherry tomatoes with a white wine apple confit. Of course we'll wash this down with some more champagne whilst my next course is plated up. Now I've branched out to the international menu just for the caviar because, well, it's a Trek trendy video of course. Korean serve an Italian etc caviar, complemented with the usual blinis, creme fraiche, grated egg and finely chopped onion. A truly indulgent and delicious treat. Now we're back on track with the Korean menu with a lotus root porridge. I can't say it looks the most appetising, but it does indeed taste great. At this point in the flight we hit some turbulence, though thankfully it's not violent enough for food service to be suspended. Now I can't say ordinarily I'd go for a salad in flight, but hey when I'm offered a gochujang paste to accompany it, I'm not going to say no. Don't fret though, it's about to get a whole lot more substantial after this lime sorbet palate cleanser. Now I simply couldn't fly Korean without their famous bibimbap. I love how much of an event this is, consisting of no less than 9 dishes, including salted pollock roe and perilla leaf salad with tofu. Proactively the crew serve me my next course of cheese and biscuits and fresh fruit, all whilst we encounter another bout of turbulence. Lastly I'm served the Korean dessert of sweet pumpkin and red bean jelly. I really wanted to like this but I can't say it's to my taste, perhaps a little too healthy for dessert in my opinion. All in all I'm glad I got to try the authentic dining options, I mean it's not every day you get to enjoy bibimbap at 35,000 feet. Now let's boot the Tims off, I make it time for a change of attire and perhaps even a sleep. 
Korean provide PJs and an amenity kit, so let's head to the bathroom and investigate. There are two lavatories located to the rear of the first class cabin. They are of decent size, but none of the bells and whistles you'd get on the likes of Emirates. The airline branded amenity kit features Atelier Cologne products, dental kit, shoehorn and eye mask. Right, let's get changed into my PJs. Now that is much more like it. During my absence, the lovely flight attendant has turned my seat down into a bed. The bed itself has a thick mattress topper, comfy pillow and thick duvet cover. Let's just quickly stow my clothing in the front wardrobe. Now finally it's time to settle in to my sleeping quarters. To ensure additional privacy, let's shut the sweet doors and cocoon ourselves in for a well-deserved rest. This is a super long haul flight and I need to attempt to get into the US time zone somehow. I await quite some time later, somewhere over the Midwest. Next I'm presented with some mineral water and a hot towel to come to while I'm offered a menu. This second meal is not nearly as extensive as our first, but I happen to be pretty hungry again. I'm pleasantly surprised to find a dedicated espresso menu, something I've never come across before on board an aircraft. It's time to get the tray table out yet again and first up sample an iced latte. Now I'm most impressed here and have to pass a sweeping statement, this is the best coffee I've ever experienced in the sky. To start I'm served an Italian salad, complete with parmesan shavings and a creamy dressing. This airline sure does love giving you a salad. Now for main, and this sure does impress me, the abalone rice and Korean style beef short rib, what a feast. With the sun now fully risen and still with a couple of hours of flight time, let's check out the IFE. Korean provide AKG noise cancelling headphones, with the IFE controlled by the remote, stowed in your left console. Sadly I find the in-flight entertainment to be rather dated and honestly quite a challenge to operate. That said the selection is half decent, with a good mix of Hollywood and Korean titles. So let's settle into a movie whilst enjoying another iced latte in bed. I'm informed it won't be long before we begin our descent into Atlanta, so let's put my slippers back on and head to the bathroom to change. My clothes have already been hung up for me to change into, now that's what we call first class service. Back up my suite in my absence, my bed has been put away and returned to the comfy armchair. Let's settle back in and put the Tims on. With my seatbelt firmly fastened, it's time for our final approach. I guess as we come into land, now is a perfect time to explain the cost and how exactly I booked this trip. Korean Airlines is a challenging ticket to book with miles, as there are very few transfer partners, and unless you fly Korean a lot, it's near on impossible. In this instance then, I ended up parting with a cool $5,312. Ok it may be an ultra long haul flight, but that still works out at over 300 bucks an hour, crikey. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all again next time.